This year we become cat parents, and in this video we'd like to share how much it costs to own a pet in Toronto. In this video we will cover the following. Initial adoption costs, monthly expenses, veterinary costs, insurance costs, and other expenses. And if you stay till the end of this video, we will share with you how much it costs to take your pet to emergency clinic in Toronto. Let's go. Meet Luna. She was our first cat and we got her in June last year when she was just three months old. She knows she is the most beautiful and I know she gives off the untouchable queen vibes, but in reality she is the cutest and most intelligent ball of fur and the most perfect hunter. So our last summer was filled with the fluffy joy, but we've realized that Luna needs a companion. Contrary to popular belief, cats are highly social animals and they need company as much as we do, so we brought Luna a little companion. Meet Luna's little brother Mars. We adopted him in October, when he was just four months old. Mars is a true rascal and a home defender. He will easily stand up against big dogs to protect his family. He's also a little silly at his age and the most affectionate and carefree small piece of caramel. We take having a pet seriously, so we make sure that our cats have everything that they need for a comfortable life. And honestly, it's brought endless joy to our home that you cannot put a price on. Nevertheless, let's dive into how much owning a pet costs in Toronto. We will speak confidently about our pet ownership specifically, but we'll also give you estimates for owning a dog too. Adoption in Canada can work several ways. You can adopt a pet from one of the many shelters in the city, or you can do it from under the table and adopt a cat from another family. There are pros and cons to both options. With our first cat, Luna, we adopted her from a friend's family. The adoption costs like that can vary. Our friend's family did not ask for anything in return, but we also had no background information on the kitten's genetics or health, and she was never seen by the vet. We still gave them $100 as an act of gratitude. We've also seen some posts on Facebook groups or on Kijiji about a cat adoption. Their fees varied between the symbolical $20 to thousands of dollars if it's a specific breed. When we adopted Mars, we got him from the Oakville Humane Society, and our adoption fee was around $400. This included the initial mandatory vaccinations, neutering, and microchipping. Yes, Mars was neutered as early as three months old. In addition, we got about a month worth of a cat food supply as a new cat parent gift. When it comes to dogs, adoption fees are typically higher and can reach up to $1,000. Luna was our first cat. We literally had nothing for her at home. We had to buy cat food and supplies, things like cat litter box and litter, food plates, water fountain, brush, and some toys. Our initial run to the pet store came up to $150 at the time. We did splurge a little to make sure that our kitten is all comfortable in her new home. But overall, I would say that $100 is the minimum expense to plan for when you're adopting a cat. Initial costs for a dog adoption will likely be around the same, if not more, even though you don't need to buy litter boxes for your dogs. And dog food and toys typically cost higher than ones for cats. The reality is that many pet owners are unfortunately reckless and irresponsible. They decide they want a pet, they get a pet, and then they realize how difficult or expensive it is, and then they throw the pet away, or in the street, or if lucky, they give it back to the shelter where they'll be back up for adoption. And as we learned from the Humane Society workers, shelters got overcrowded after the pandemic ended. People simply started returning pets that they got during the pandemic. So if you're adopting from a shelter, they will make sure you're fit to take care after the animal. We had to fill out a written questionnaire which assessed our experience with pets in the past and our overall attitude and financial commitment to having a pet. After this initial screening, our next step was a phone interview where we had to answer deep dive questions about our attitude, previous experience with cats, whether we have other animals, how much money we're willing to budget yearly for a pet, and how often we're planning to take Mars to the vet. There were also questions like, are you planning to declaw your pet? Or how often are you planning to groom your pet? And are you planning to let your pet go out Outside. Our interview went well, so next we waited for another 24 hours for a decision to be made. And after the positive decision, the final step was actually picking up the pet. 
but we're giving all the documents and the shelter representative shared the entire health history of Mars with us. We signed adoption papers and finally could take our new baby home. With the Mars's adoption, we bought a new cat litter box for him, a few toys, some treats, and it all cost us around $50. Once you have a cat, there are ongoing costs associated with keeping your furry friend joyful and furry. We would split it into three big categories – food, supplies and miscellaneous stuff. Let's talk about food. There's plenty of pet stores around the city and online, hence the selection of food is vast, and so are the prices for cat food. Just like with human food, there are different food quality options and various price points, and we wanted to make sure our cats eat healthy, so we always buy good quality food and regularly buy real fish and chicken for them as well. So overall, we feed them a mix of wet food, dry food and real food. On top of that, we give them treats, vitamins and bone sticks to chew on. Our average monthly cat food expense is somewhere between $70 to $100. That's for two cats. We like to introduce diversity in our cat's diet, so we experiment and buy different flavors and different foods for them. That is why our budget also varies from month to month. Dog food is generally more expensive, and depending on the size of the dog, they might eat two to four times more than cats, so you should budget accordingly. As for supplies, if your cat is an indoor cat and lives with you in an apartment, you want to budget for cat litter and nail scratcher. Litter is something you have to commit to no matter what, especially if you want to make sure there is no mess or smell coming out from your pet's litter box. Our average monthly litter cost is around $30 for both cats. We've managed to find a fantastic cat litter that traps smells well, doesn't cause mess and is 100% natural. It's actually made of real peas. If you want to know what it is, we will leave the link in the description box below. The designated nail scratcher helps you ensure that your furniture does not become the nail scratcher. And if you own a dog, you don't have to worry about litter, since dogs usually do their business outside. Your only expense on that front is dog poop bags, which would come to around $30 to $40 a month. Picking up poop after your dog is mandatory in Canada, so make sure to budget for poop bags. Always pick up your dog poop. Unless it's your backyard and you need fertilizer for your garden. And the last one is miscellaneous stuff. These are general supplies for cats. It could be new toys for cats, grooming supplies, or maybe a new cat bed or blanket and so on. For instance, we got our cats two cat trees to make sure that they stay active and exercise their climbing abilities. It's important for us to let our cats let all their energy out, especially since they don't go outside. It keeps them in good shape, helps them burn energy during the day, enriches their environment and gives them something to climb on. The miscellaneous costs are discretionary. It all depends on how much you want to invest in your pet and what's your budget like. For our two cats, we don't consider it as monthly budget, but we've spent additional $300 for two cats for all those nice-to-haves. Part of this can also be considered initial costs. For instance, once you get a blanket or a cat tree, you won't be buying another one for a while. As for dogs, the story there is pretty similar. It all depends on how much you are willing to splurge. Additionally, you may want to consider hiring a trainer for your dog, maybe to address behavioral challenges, so be ready to account for these expenses, especially if you've never owned a dog before. Dog trainers may charge around $50 for one hour session, and there is no limit to their price. Your little friends are living beings, and they also need to see a doctor for prevention and treatment. We would split these vet costs into two big buckets, planned health expenses and unplanned ones. Let's start with the planned vet visits. There are a few things that are recommended for your pets. These are regular vaccinations on a yearly basis, annual health checkup appointments, and spaying or neutering surgeries for when your cats grow up. If you're adopting from a shelter, your cat would already be spayed or neutered. It is highly recommended to do planned regular health checks for your little ones and keep an eye on their overall behavior to identify early signs of sickness. It is especially important for cats as they are notorious for not showing signs or symptoms of sickness till it's very late. 
Vets in Canada are very expensive. It seems like the Canadian healthcare crisis is very well extended into the veterinary healthcare crisis. Clinics are overbooked and there is a shortage of professionals, so visits are expensive and sometimes you have to wait for a month to get an appointment for a specific procedure. An average vet visit for a cat in Toronto is around $70 to $100. It highly depends on the clinic and the location. Downtown clinics can be twice as expensive as the ones in the GTA outskirts like Scarborough, for instance. Vaccinations typically go anywhere between $30 to $100 per visit, which may include several vaccines in one and are recommended on a yearly or biannual basis. If your pet goes outside, that's especially relevant for dogs, there are additional vaccines to protect your pets from all sorts of outdoor parasites and diseases. As for spaying and neutering, since our little Luna was adopted from a family, she was never spayed. We're planning to spay her, and here's a vet surgery estimate for spaying our girl. We will just leave it here for you to read and digest. Keep in mind that this estimate is for laparoscopic procedure. Traditional surgery would be cheaper, and the cheapest option would be to go to Humane Society that offers spaying and neutering services. Their cost estimate is around two to four hundred dollars. Please make sure you understand all the steps of the procedures and what that entails before deciding to do it. It's more complicated for female cats than male cats. Oftentimes, humane societies and shelters offer high-volume spay-neuter surgeries, which means that they dedicate operating room for spaying and neutering only. And the veterinarian's mission is to sterilize as many animals as possible throughout the day, one after the other. That's why the cost would be cheaper. If you're planning on adopting a pet, we highly recommend you go to a shelter because your adoption fees will usually include the initial vaccinations and the spaying fees. And that will, in total, come out to be much cheaper than doing it on your own. Because vet clinics will charge you per each visit and each vaccine shot and each medication, and they'll try to sell you food, vitamins, and all that additional stuff, and then on top of that you'll have to wait for your appointment. For example, we will need to wait for about three months to get a spaying surgery for Luna because all the clinics in the city are overbooked. Let's talk about unplanned vet visits. This one is the scariest one because unfortunately we have faced an emergency situation with our little Luna. And before we share how much it cost us, we just want to say that our little babies, just like humans, can get sick. They can get sick from things within our control. For instance, some common flowers, like lilies, are actually deadly for cats. While some pets develop sickness based on loneliness and anxiety if their homeowners are rarely home. Dogs are also notoriously known for biting and sometimes swallowing all sorts of things like toys and other small objects. It's our responsibility to take good care of them and be attentive to their needs. Pets can also get sick because there are things just outside of our control. For instance, genetic diseases. This one is hard to predict, but this is one more reason why we recommend adopting a pet from the shelter. Sheltered pets go through a health examination and blood tests that can help determine an initial idea of their health to help you make better decisions about their lifestyle. So earlier this fall in September, we had to take our little Luna to emergency clinic and she was later diagnosed with kidney injury. The sole emergency clinic visit to downtown costs us around $800. This is just a visit. If you have the luxury of waiting for a few days and calling all the vet clinics to find an available appointment slot, it'll be way cheaper. But in our situation, it really was an emergency case. Our kitten ended up staying at the intensive care unit for four days on life support, and she was taken care of by the most wonderful team at the veterinary emergency clinic. Honestly, we thought we'd lost her, but she survived. She's such a fighter. So five days later and nearly $10,000 in emergency vet bills, our little Luna came home. This is the breakdown of the invoice we had to pay to have Luna's life saved. We have no doubt that the clinic did their best and we trust their judgment in every decision they had made. We also had a chance to chat with the technicians on duty and they shared with us how difficult the job is and how horribly understaffed, underpaid, and overworked they are. We want to give a shout out to all the veterinary workers and give our deep appreciation and respect for all your work. 
It takes a huge soul and dedication to do the job you guys do. After the emergency clinic adventures, it didn't stop there. We had to keep an eye on our little Luna to ensure quick and good recovery for her. We had to modify her diet and set up additional lab tests and checkups to make sure she's recovering steadily. Overall, it cost us an additional $1,000 to make sure she's fully recovered. For all of you wondering, little Luna is now healthier than ever and she is an ideal hunter and the best fluff we could have wished to have at home, right? And all this takes us to the next expense. If you want to avoid thousands of dollars in unplanned vet visits for situations like the one we had with Luna, you can purchase a pet insurance. It works exactly like human health insurance and it costs around $30 to $50 per month or around $600 a year and covers a portion of your vet expenses for your pets. Dog insurance will vary depending on the size and breed of the dog and can reach easily $100 a month. We highly recommend you read more about pet insurance and how it works and what's covered before committing to it. For instance, many basic insurances may not cover vaccinations or spaying or neutering. So make sure to do your research to get the best value for your insurance. What we've learned is that if you plan on getting a pet insurance, get it as soon as you can while your pet is young and healthy. The younger the pet, the cheaper the insurance. There is also a grace period between the time that you purchase your insurance and the time it kicks in. For instance, if you purchase your insurance and your pet gets sick within the first month, whatever they had, this condition will be considered a pre-existing condition and will therefore never be covered by the insurance. If we had purchased insurance for Luna, we would have saved between 50 to 80% of the $10,000 we'd paid for her treatment. When we got Mars, we considered getting an insurance. But after looking at our options, we made a decision to put aside a cat emergency fund so that instead of paying $600 for insurance, we're making sure that we're putting our own money aside in case of emergency. And in the meantime, we're taking extra good care of our pets to make sure that they have a healthy, happy and safe environment to live in. There are also other expenses that is worth considering. They don't really fall under any of the categories we've covered. For instance, if you have a dog and you need a dog walker, that's an additional $10 to $50 per walk. If you travel a lot, you need to consider what happens to your pet while you're away. You can hire a pet sitter or maybe get away by asking your family or friends to look after your furry friends. Leaving them alone is certainly not an option. Some pet owners send their pets to pet hotels for the time that they're away. These pet hotels work similarly to human hotels, except they look more like a cage rather than a hotel room. Such hotels are not cheap and it could cost around $100 per night. Some pets can also be messier than others, so you might need to do more home cleaning with your new pet or spend more time cleaning yourself. It is important to also make sure that no one in your family has an allergy for the pet, otherwise you'll have to factor things like allergy pills or allergist treatment into your monthly expenses. And lastly, if you plan on living in condo buildings, not all landlords allow for pets. So if you decide to have a pet, whether it's a cat or a dog, this will limit your apartment search options and might even cost you more since you'd have to make a damage or a pet deposit. If you've missed anything or you have any questions, please leave a comment below. This video was made possible thanks to some of our patrons who have subscribed to us on Patreon. And if you want to support us and have an opportunity to vote for the upcoming videos and participate in live Q&A sessions with us, head over down the link below and subscribe to us on Patreon. And if you like this video, now is the best time to click the like button below and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care.